بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم. So the purpose of all here is clear because it is an indication. Allah is saying to to the Prophet that you say this conversation with me so that Ahlul Kitab understands the extent of the power of God and that all people are equal in his eyes except if his wisdom desires that he should give someone something or take away something some something from someone. So Allahumma is a different form of Ya Allah. Malik al Mulk. The, the most accurate translation would be you are the possessor of sovereignty. Sovereignty is in your hands. You give it to whoever you wish. Now, what is this sovereignty? What is this mulk? Mulk means kingdom, of course. But when we refer it to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his mulk, his kingdom, and his possession, his ownership are the same. Because the ownership of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala towards things is different from our ownership towards them. We own things which are somehow separate from us. We have no power over them in the sense it's just a convention that we own them. While when Allah owns something, everything, every aspect of that thing is ruled, is overpowered by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So whether we say Malik or Malik, that's why in Surah uh, Al-Fatiha, when we recite Surah Al-Fatiha in the Salat, we can say uh, both things, these are, these are variant uh, recitations of the of the verse we can say Malik Yawmuddin or Malik Yawmuddin because for Allah both meanings merge into one thing when we say Mulk belongs to your kingdom Malik also belongs to him that is possession that is everything which could be owned is owned by him uh, so when this is of course accepted then our possessions, our sovereignty, whether it's sovereignty of a king or sovereignty of a person over the affairs, it all emanates from him because everything in true, in, in the true sense belongs to him. And then conventionally we take possession of them. So that's why it says, You give kingdom to anyone you wish, or sovereignty. Maybe sovereignty is a better term because uh, sovereignty is uh, is more general than kingdom. Kingdom is a type of sovereignty, but there are other types of sovereignty. Even prophethood is a type of sovereignty as well. Imama is a type of sovereignty as well. So maybe to translate mulk as sovereignty would be a better uh, understanding. You give this sovereignty to have whoever you wish, and you take it from whoever you wish. This wish is based on hikmah and on knowledge. Now the question here is, does this mulk uh, include the worldly kingdoms as well? And does it, okay, there are certain kingdoms which uh, were very good, the kings were quite just, Allah gave them kingdom. There are other just kings uh, over the history. However, the question is, what about kingdoms who are corrupt? We, we have kings, many of them in the course of history, and they were corrupt. Sometimes these kings acquired their kingdom by murder, by killing, by rasb, usurpation, by power struggle. So is it what also Allah gives to people? The kingdom of Namrud is given to him by God as well. So that means every kingdom, every Ezza is given by God. To Azzumantasha, you give might and dignity to whoever you wish and take it away from whoever you wish. What uh, Sayyid Taba Tabai says is that, you know, in our society, because we are social beings, we live in society, 
we need administration. And that, that administration needs a head. And Allah says, so to some people, I give that administration. Now, this is a blessing. However, if they do not use it correctly, if they are corrupt, it is not the blessing of Allah which is not good. Just like the res, which is always good, but if we use it in a bad way, it becomes something which uh, we would uh, regret having it. So the mulk is given by Allah to everyone who should have it. Every society needs a head. Every society needs a, a, a malik. And that malik, that mulk is given by Allah to some people, not to everyone, of course. However, it is they who are corrupting it. And when it comes to a spiritual mulk, that is for Anbiya and Usiya and Awliya, of course, Allah chooses them very uh, accurately, meticulously choosing, meticulously choosing those who deserve it and those who would not corrupt it. So uh, there's a range of mulk in uh, human societies that we can imagine. But Allah says, it is me who gives to anyone I like or take it away from anyone I like. Now, the example of Namrud is very uh, interesting because Allah says, An mulk. I had given him the, uh, the, the sovereignty and mulk, but he started to argue against me with Ibrahim alayhi salam. So he corrupted what Allah had given him. Then another uh, sort of a sister verse which comes after immediately after it Yulijul Layl means makes the night pass into the day a meaning which is said for that is that it is about the length of day and night the sometimes days are shorter and sometimes the nights are shorter and then over the year for example, as the night increases in its duration, the day decreases, is reduced in its duration. This is ilajul layl fil nahar wa ilajul nahar fil layl. Or another view is that we replace them. You replace day by the night and you replace night by the day. It's ikhtilaf for layl wa nahar, the coming and going of night and the day. However, this doesn't make much sense here to, after the previous verse, to mention something here which is somehow unrelated. My understanding here is that it is not talking about the sort of physical uh, process which is involved. It's saying that Allah is aware of everything because he is the one who ends the day and he is the one who ends the night. He is the one who brings day to its end and day brings night to its end. He is aware of everything happening in during the day and during the night. And that actually, that meaning fits very nicely here. You bring forth the living from the dead and bring forth the death from the living. So they say, يُخْرِجُ hayya مِنَ الْمَيِّتِ means يُخْرِجُ hayya مِنَ النُطْفَةِ The nutfa, the fetus before the soul is blown into it. And that's meter. يُخْرِجُ hayya مِنَ الْمَيِّتِ And also يُخْرِجُ الْمَيِّتَ مِنَ الْحَيِّ Reports from Imam Ja'far al-Sadiq and Imam al-Baqir al salam his blessed father, they have said that another meaning of this يُخْرِجُ الْحَيَّ مِنَ الْمَيِّتِ وَيُخْرِجُ الْمَيِّتِ تُخْرِجُ الْحَيَّ مِنَ الْمَيِّتِ وَتُخْرِجُ الْمَيِّتَ مِنَ الْحَيِّ is إِخْرَاجُ الْمُؤْمِنِ مِنَ الْكَافِرِ وَالْكَافِرُ مِنَ الْمُؤْمِنِ A believing person may have a child who is non-believing, who is a disbeliever, and vice versa, a disbeliever may have a child who is a believer. And we said that the believer has a higher grade of life and is life in essence, life of a spiritual connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala.
So he brings forth the believer from disbeliever and the disbeliever from the believer. And this is what we know happening all the time during the history. We know about many great prophets who had children disbelieving and vice versa. We had disbelievers who had children who were very committed believers. And you provide for anyone, for, who, for whoever you wish, without any reckon. Usually we have account of our income, we have speculation about what we earn over the year, and suddenly something comes outside that uh, counting that we have, that expectation, this is Bahir Isa. However, another meaning has been mentioned, and that is, you know, when we want to deal with our, when we have properties, money, bank account, and we want to spend, we usually keep the account for it. Why? Because we should know how much we have spent so that we wouldn't run out of cash or wouldn't run out of resources so that we don't go bankrupt. For Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because his resources are endless and are not restricted, then he doesn't need to keep account of it. He can just give without keeping any record, without reckoning. Allahumma salli